most I want to really thank you for being with me. Not only here. Some of you have journeyed with me from almost childhood. I have my a guy who used to sit next to me in class when I was in school. He's right there. One hour, we used to call him Bunty. I've got people who helped me to experiment with yoga and health in none other than Narsan and Tubro and Srivastava. Thank you for coming. That's Srivastava there. We have got people who have uh, literally given me an appetite to look after young people who don't even know how to stand properly on their feet. You know, there's one man here, Paul D'Souza, who says that this is a priest who stood on his head to make us stand on our feet. <laughs> his gracious wife, Vatsala, a great journalist, helped me in the last stages to check that everything was okay. And I got an okay from her and I said to Joby, we can go ahead. My dear people, I can look around and tell you that my vocation to the priesthood was not just a vocation to the priesthood. When I encountered Mother Teresa in 1971, when many of my colleagues, I was ordained in Pune, I was studying in Pune, four of them there, two of them in Bombay, with the priesthood, got married, left. And uh, I too was hesitating whether I should continue or not continue. I bumped into Mother Teresa, and Mother Teresa said, totally. That's it. 1971. And she said, uh, it may take a long time. It may take even 10 years. Well, I don't know why she said 10 years. Exactly 10 years later, I started Kripa. And today, I was surprised to see Java Muga who runs our centre in Calcutta, a centre gifted by Mother Teresa. She's right here. So I see people all over. Okay, you saw the Amir Khan show. You saw the Amir Khan show that brought in millions of people suffering of alcohol and drugs into the AA Fellowship. It's a strong presence of AA Fellowship here. Yeah? But Vijay Sinha is right here, all the way from Delhi. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, the family that encouraged me was a beautiful soul, Alice, of the PN Right Hand Company, Charles and Alice. I could hardly manage to look after 45, 50 people with a budget of 5 rupees a day for their food in 1981. And Alice would quietly come and give me the money to make up for the deficit. Her son, her son is William, whose wife is here with us, Cynthia is here. She says, don't mention me, I'm a shy person. <laughs> well, you know, she's right here. Pian Raita and Company, uh, Denzel D'Souza from London today, phoned me and, and uh, wished me. These are, this is family. But when I look at Ashok, Bedi and uh, Usha, this is the Shakti behind Ashok. You know, we were all the time discussing uh, after the workshops and all. Usha used to be there, put in her his suggestions here and there. One fine day she said, hey you guys, why don't you put it all this in a book? We looked at each other and we said, should be. And that's how the journey began. And this is only a beginning of the journey because when we talk about the real crux of addiction, we fight shy about one dimension which is God or a spiritual dimension. All the AA people, Pushan and Po and everyone here, all of you all know that if we are well because there is that golden thread of spirituality running right through all the 12 steps. But many times people feel ashamed to say this. Well, the co-founder himself when he was, when he got all right, you know, he got all right in a very strange circumstance. His doctor gave up on him. Dr. Silva gave up on him. Four times he was admitted at the town's hospital. Mind you, he was a stockbroker. And after the two, uh, 1929 crash of the, uh, you know, the, the 
the, the big you know, stock market crash. 1930, America survived on a potato diet. And guess what could have happened to a stockbroker? Became an alcoholic. Four times admitted in town's hospital. The fourth time, Dr. Silkworth calls Louise, his wife, and says, you better lock this fellow off. Because if he goes and drinks, he will either get out of his head, he'll lose his mind, or he will die a premature death. That's the three options we have. Get all right in time. Otherwise, you're going to be heading for all psychiatric disorders, or you're going to die a premature death. Many of my uh, patients, wives and children, you know what they say? Mar jata tha to achcha tha. Mela asa tha bara dala asa. You know, they are in Maharashtra, I have to speak Marathi. So, it would be better if he had died, if he would have died, than to be a man without his mind, or losing his mind. This is what drugs are doing. And today the myth that, uh, you know, just uh, uh, use of, uh, of some of these drugs, especially the weed, there are youngsters telling their parents, Father Joe does not know, weed is not a drug. <laughs> I've heard the story. And you know, I have weed induced psychotic patients with us. Pathetic. So we have to stop this in time. Now with regard to the book, uh, when the Alcoholics Anonymous came to India, and by the way, uh, I was kind of blessed to be in a parish where Harry Matthias began his group there. Harry Matthias was the man who came, who, who got the message in Delhi. He went, there was an advertisement of somebody coming to Delhi. He went there, he got the message there, he came here and he started. Can you imagine why God puts me in a parish where the, the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous is in that parish. He died just before I landed there with his gracious wife and his children were very close to me. And that's how I kept on going for those meetings. And I got very attached to these people, very lovable people, you know, and they got attached to me. When I got the Padmashri, I always told people, I, am, I don't deserve the Padmashri. The real Padmas are these people who have recovered and recovered. Because they have to remain, uh, you know, anonymous. That's why the, the Lord, the government gives me this honor. So I accepted it only in their name. Now, when this Alcoholics Anonymous came to Bombay, came to India, uh, they had two powerful dimensions. One is the psycho-spirituality and the other is the psycho-social dimension. But the third dimension was missing. I felt it was missing. What is that? Psychosomatic. About which uh, Dr. Ashok Vedi and I we were fascinated because every time I went there to Milwaukee, New York, and those places, did workshops there, he had come, he used to come to my workshop. You know, the joke of it all is one day at some, one workshop, somebody came and said, Who is the priest here? <laughs> is Dr. Vedi a priest? Or is this Father Joe? He's so spiritually oriented that uh, we, we really felt that we were like twins, you know, uh, soulmates. And we went on searching, and we are still searching, isn't it? Uh, yeah, way, absolutely. <laughs> we are still searching, because who knows, the outcome of this book has to lead us to give a world that is in a paradox. Longing on the one side for love and God, and not finding it at all. Because satanically, there is a whole kingdom that deceives this person who is longing for this search and implodes it in all kinds of varieties of addictions. And my dear friends, let's not say it is they who are addicts. Starting with myself, all of us are addicts. Vernon Johnson one day said, a great addiction novelist, he said it's a dubious luxury to think that you are not an addict. So we really want to look at the whole world today moving in a very addictive way an addiction of all kinds, some addiction of power that is making so many governments un uneasy, you know. All this is to be looked at with the prism of addictionology that is basically frustrating the original thirst for God. So what did Prima Foundation Iyengar Yoga do? Way back when I was in Woodhouse in 1974, I tried introducing yoga to the Alanon people and they threw me out. 
<laughs> no. And he has no opinion about all these things. Yoga and yoga and all that. Out. You know? So, okay. But I continued my studies in yoga and Guruji became a sanger. Encouraged me to help this addict for whom Patanjali's teaching of Chitta Vritti Niroda is not enough. Because an addict can dig circles around the best thinking people. They can fool any psychiatrist. So what do they need? Not Chitta Vritti Niroda. Snayu Vritti Niroda. And this modern research in behavioral medicine has affirmed us. How? Because when we work with the cellular consciousness, we can create what is called a nitrous oxide effect within us. And we don't have to, you know, do all kinds of extraordinary things. We don't have to go through, uh, yes, we do need psychiatry and all that. The left brain has to be used. We have to be convinced. But when it comes to submitting ourselves, especially the third step, making a will and a life over to God, Haji Haji. A lot of people, Haji Haji. What is that? Dr. Vernon, Dr. Uh, Harry Ebout wrote a beautiful thesis that 50% of the Alcoholics Anonymous people are people who are only compliant. It's those who surrender that really maintain a good recovery. This is a little bit of a lesson to all my AA people here. Not enough to just stay away from the, from the chemical. We are all dry drugs. We take up to so many other things which we feel it's okay. I'm not drinking. But you are Ask your wife. You know, the, so many times loved ones tell me, Father, you know, he was better when he was drinking. <laughs> What's the purpose of giving up? If you're not really going to be fully whole. And therefore, the body, which never tells lies, needs to be brought into awareness. Why? Because when you get this awareness in your, in your, in your cells, then the whole world changes. And the Vedas have always said that. Yatha pinde, tatha brahmande. As it is for you on your cellular consciousness level, so it is on the global level. So when the government gave me the Padma Shri, the AA people came running to me and said, Can you be our class A trustee? I said on one condition. Can I speak about this body stuff and yoga stuff? I said, okay. So I gave the, one of the keynote addresses on spirituality in Goa, which we had a World Congress. I put forth this idea that, hey, the founding fathers providentially used one word in the 11th step, sought through prayer and meditation to improve my conscious contact with God. Seeking only for God's will and the power to carry that out. What is this meditation? In India, Ashtang Yoga, the seventh limb is Dhyana, which is meditation. But how do you reach that Dhyana? From the periphery to the center, from the sympathetic nervous system, the central nervous system, via the autonomous nervous system, that is what fascinates you. So can we to let's put this thing together. There is a beautiful way of rescripting our lives and not living on the periphery, but coming from the center, so that the whole world, in the words of Einstein, becomes a friendly place. When they come into the program, they're cursing the world. When they get well, they are blessing the world. And this is the book that I think will lead us to also make further inroads into the variety of human dimensions that can be re-scripted for excellence. Excellence of, you know, you can use this a lot with the youngsters because meditation today is talked about as a powerful tool not only to find one's inner peace and well-being but also to be able to get people to get natural uh, benefits like the power of concentration the power of detention, the power of understanding, and the power of memory. You know, uh, I had Dr. Maria here with her lovely mother, Phyllis. I always, uh, you know, Phyllis and I you always meet, and we used to meet at the meditation programs. And this meditation that we are teaching is originally uh, was, was inspired by uh, Swami Satyananda in Kuala Lumpur at the Pure Life Society, okay? Now see the symphony of it all, see the uh, God's providence that the, that's, it's there that I'm going to do a meditation program this November and uh, God 
purposely made me miss my plane when I was coming back from China. So I had to stop by at Kuala Lumpur and I met this whole team there and we have planned a program there. But coming to the point, John May got his inspiration from Swami Satyananda from that place there. And God is taking me there because today meditation can impact the world and help us to change our lives, our attitudes, our entire way of dealing with humanity. So, with these words, I want to ask Bishop Agnero, I can't thank you enough for being here. Uh, this is the man who is, I would say, if you have not seen Pope Francis, <laughs> take a good look at him. <laughs> Only Mother Teresa encouraged me, Guruji BK as anger encouraged me. And I'm happy to say Gita Ji has sent me a very special letter of uh, congratulations and affirmation because Guruji was the first who said to me that uh, you must develop your, your practice to reach out to these unfortunates. This is his word. And, uh, and that's what really we are doing. I anger you people. All of them are here starting with Mimi who takes part in my musical, The Witness, you know, she does the Hanuman Asana and I do the, the head balance. Can you imagine a 75-year-old fellow standing on his head and twirling the head the head? But that is the strength of yoga. Helps me, helps us to put the whole world upside down. And uh, so, coming back to our chief guest who's going to uh, open up, who's going to have this launch, I request, uh, now is Emeritus, but auxiliary Bishop Agnello to give us a spiritual little tonic. Okay? <laughs> Thank you.